Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, mammals. This is my second video in a series of four going into a little more detail and specifics about macromolecules and the monomers that make them up. The original video was really, really long and it made it difficult for people to find the information that they needed, so I'm chunking it up. The first video, if you haven't seen it, was about carbohydrates. This one is going to be about amino acids and proteins. And just like in the carbohydrate video, I want to go over how to identify an amino acid or a protein by looking for certain functional groups, what the monomers are, and then what the polymers are, how those are produced from monomers linking them together, and then their functions. This is a single amino acid which is going to be our monomer, and its name gives away the functional groups that are present. This NH2 is our amine, so you'll be looking for an NH2. This C double bonded to an O, single bonded to an O, and an H is a carboxylic acid. This is how we get the name amino acid because we're composed of an amine and a carboxylic acid. What else we've got on here? This R is the side chain. This can be replaced with different groups of atoms that change what kind of amino acid it is, but that's kind of beyond the level of this class. You'll get into some more specific amino acids when you take biology, but for us, we just need you to recognize when I have an NH2 and when I have a C double bond O, OH, it's an amino acid. Let's now look at how individual amino acids will join together to form a polymer. I've drawn two individual amino acid monomers. I didn't replace the side chain with anything, just left it as the random R. And this forms a polymer the same way that carbohydrates do by dehydration. So we're going to remove a water from these two molecules and join them together. Our water is going to come from the OH from this carboxylic acid and the H from this amine are going together, join together and produce a water. So water comes out and in their place the carbon and the nitrogen are going to be joined. So the products of this are going to be water and the two amino acids joined together with this bond here in the middle called a peptide bond. So just to review, we took the OH and the H from two separate amino acids to form water. That leaves. That's how we get the name dehydration. And then what those atoms were bonded to are now bonded together. So we have this new carbon-nitrogen bond, which is called a peptide bond. And our two amino acids have now been joined together in one. This is a really, really small polymer. This would be called a dipeptide because we have two amino acids. But you repeat this enough times over and over and over again and link a large number of these and we call it a
protein. So the individual monomers are amino acids, and the polymer, especially if it's a large polymer of amino acids, is a protein. Going to wrap up on the functions of proteins. The main uh, function of proteins is structure. Of course, all your muscle tissue is made of proteins. But so are some things that you might not think about it, like the protein keratin makes up your skin, hair, and nails. So proteins make up not only kind of the fleshy bits of you, but then they also provide some structural elements too. And they do a lot of other important things. Proteins act as enzymes, which speed up reactions. They make important reactions for life that might not happen at a rate quick enough on their own to keep you living. They make them happen quick enough for you to function. And the one thing that's kind of a misnomer, especially because it's in vogue right now is, uh, as a high-protein diet, a lot of people think proteins are sources of energy. Your body can use them, but that's really not its preferred choice. So this is an energy source of last resort. In other words, I'm saying on a test, if I ask you what's the purpose of a protein and one of the answer choices is energy source, I don't want you to choose it no matter how many like protein shakes and protein bars you see on the market. Your body would really rather use protein to make more of you and use carbohydrates and fats as its energy source. So that's going to wrap it up now as a detailed look at the protein macromolecule. And I'll continue on with the next two parts of this series, which will be lipids and fatty acids and nucleotides. So as always, take care of yourself and others, practice good hygiene, and I'll see you on the flip side.